Today we're looking at one of the most expensive tools we've ever had on the channel. It's the Milwaukee Force Logic Knockout Tool. It goes through that like butter. With great price comes great responsibility and I'm expecting for what we pay for this to be immensely impressed. Uh, well, hopefully we won't disappoint Gary because uh, yeah, you know me, I like, a, I like a tool with a purpose. You know, we've previously on the channel reviewed the Makita coffee machine which divides the eFix team. But uh, yeah, will this uh, Force Logic film Will Walkie, will it be a, a winner for us here at eFix compared to our traditional way of cutting holes, the cone cutter, the step cutter? or the uh, hole saws that everybody's using. So okay. we have teased this out previously in a short and everyone said, well, why didn't you use a hole cutter or a, or a step drill? That's what we're using. Um, but hopefully today we can prove that this tool is of worth and is something possibly for the serious metal muncher. We don't think it's a hobbyist tool if you're the occasional- no, no. Uh, This is occasional not a hobbyist tool. Let's stop there. This is not a hobbyist tool because it's not hobbyist money. Okay, and we will reflect on the cone cutter and the hole saw in another video as well. But I'm gonna need to see what's in this box before you show me the receipt for it. Here we go. So what have we got then? Okay, so here's the, uh, here's the star of the show. This is the Milwaukee Force Logic. Uh, this is obviously the hydraulic element of it. It works on the M18 battery system and it comes with a two ampere hour battery. Oh, it did come with a battery. It then, did yeah. come with a battery, but yeah, it's only the two amp hour, but I think that'll do a, a significant number of holes, um, obviously, and the charger to go with it. Uh, and then some selection of bits you need. Obviously the most important bits being the punch and die selection. Uh, unfortunately, a bit like, uh, you know, when you buy a car, when there's some switches missing on the dashboard. Yeah. Clearly we've, there's a few missing in this uh, European kit. I suspect our American friends get the two inch conduit adapter included and the one and a half inch conduit adapter or in uh, metric terms, 50 millimeters and 63. It goes up to hundred, is that right? It goes up to hundred, but in this one, uh, we've got a starting at, yeah. 16 millimeters, 20 millimeters, 25, 32, and 40 millimeter cutters. So pretty logical sizes for an electrical contractor then. Yeah, that's it. And there's some other parts in there we're gonna show you as we go through the demonstration. Okay, should we look at the demonstration then? Okay, so let's get started with the Force Logic knockout tool. Get it out of the box, Gary. I like a box, especially when it's full of accessories like this. Well, I love a pouch and you're gonna have to win me over, but I'm leaning in already. It looks great. Yeah, so first thing we're gonna do is put this adapter in that allows us to use a quick release mechanism. So paired with that is this guard tool, just in case you uh, want to uh, attempt to stick your finger into the mechanism, which I would advise with, uh, yeah, 60 kilonewtons of force is not a good idea. So this latches with this uh, ball adapter here, and then there's our activating tool for the uh, for the die. There's two different sizes of those adapters. This is a smaller one? Yes, this is a smaller one, so a smaller adapter for smaller sized um, dies itself. So let's just centre punch with our automatic centre punch where we're going to um, drill through. So yeah, the one thing everyone else misses out of the reviews, yes, you do have to drill a pilot hole, in this case, 12 millimeters or the data sheet actually says 11.1 couldn't get that in a hole punch in a, uh, in, a in a drill but uh, so we have to go with the nearest which for us is 12 millimeters and so you've got some of your favorite item out there gary yeah. the old, uh, what is it yes yeah, the old uh, cooling gel yeah so we've uh, get the get that out of the way we've drilled our pilot hole so now let's just assemble uh, the so there's the die mechanism onto the activator put that in there and then put our cutting die underneath so we've drilled a hole but we're going to benefit from having that super clean hole when we cut it, aren't we? Well, if this, uh, if this review turns out well, it will be clean. If it's not, then it will be yeah, a raggy hole, but there we go, we're pulling that through now. Okay, it's just single trigger to activate that. And there we go, we've removed that uh, additional material. So that put a 25 millimeter hole in there. Okay, so that's a 25 mil one. We're going to obviously see the remnants of that material now when it comes out. Yeah, so again, you always have to unscrew the die anyway if you were going to use another um, another uh, for this for another hole. And there's our waste material, and that hole is super smooth. And I would say that's probably its biggest feature, isn't it? The fact that you're not coming in, you're not deburring, and it's yeah. punched, not actually drilled out that hole. Yeah, and that's a 25 millimeter adapter, and it's exactly sized for that. So now let's uh, just up the size a bit to a 40 millimeter, which means I need to use a bigger activating pin, so I'm gonna need to swap that over. It can go as big as 100 mil, am I right? Yeah, it can. In, uh, in mild steel, that's three millimeter thickness or two and a half millimeters in stainless steel. You'll see this is marked, it's handed. You can see pointing towards the tool and pointing towards where you put the, uh, the die. 
So we're now at a 20 mil hole in order that we can get our pin in, is that right? Yes, that's it. And I've, I've marked that on the step drill there, Gary, because sometimes you get a bit carried away with a step drill and miss, miss your step, a bit like missing a bus stop. However, it wouldn't necessarily be an issue, and we'll see that later on in the video if your hole was a little bit too big. No, that's it. It would be on the 16 millimeter one though, Gary, I can tell you that, but that's, that's for a future video, of that. <laughs> okay, so all good. So we're gonna spin this in the bottom as usual, and then we're gonna... Uh, yeah. So the good thing about this quick release mechanism, you're putting it in there, then bringing the tool in, swiveling the guard round. If, if you didn't have that, obviously you'd have to wait the tool on there before you're ready to go. There's yeah. something quite satisfying about seeing it punch a hole out rather than cut one, isn't there? Yeah, that's it. I mean, there we go. Mm. Really quick, really clean. Again, just uh, push the trigger again to release the mechanism, swivel around the guard, and then yeah, we've removed it. That's the advantage of that quick release mechanism. You can get the, the tool and the die off there. Okay, so again, opening out, we'll see the material left uh, behind. Yeah, it's good. Super smooth hole. I'll take it when you rub your finger around, take your glove off, couldn't you? It really is smooth. Yeah. So now let's look at another scenario where we traditionally might have used the old double hole saw trick. We're going to enlarge an existing hole. Okay, so we're going to make this, what, 40 mil hole from a 25 mil? Yeah, that's the only die we could afford in this set. So we, yeah, we'd love to have the 100 millimeter one, but uh, yeah, we're stuck at 40. So I've marked the center lines of, of that hole. You could potentially go off center if you wanted to move your hole a little bit forward. Put that in place and then just line it up with the uh, the marks. We've got the red marks ah. on the on the, uh, on the on the uh, die are great for that. And I didn't realise what they were for, so that makes logical sense now. So I could have brought it forward, backward, left or right from that original hole. We've centred it, and now we're going to go from 25 mil to 40 mil. Yeah. Okay. And again, just uh, push that trigger. Yeah, we should have a nice clean hole emerging soon. Yeah, it just pops out, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's really good, isn't it? Yeah. Those lines are perfect. So again, same procedure in terms of uh, removing the material we've just cut out, just uh, release the mechanism and uh, yeah, it just pops out that ball. Ball attachment is really good. So I'll just you know, swivel the uh, cutting die out. Yep, and you see, uh, see the lines as well, I like that, yeah, that's yeah. really good. One thing people say is then that, that can it be stainless steel? Yeah, so the most difficult bit about the stainless steel is drilling the pilot hole. Uh, but I'm going to demonstrate another feature here. We're going to remove the quick release mechanism to shorten the tool. So say you were going to work inside a panel and you just needed to gain a little bit more depth. Okay, so you make it a little bit more compact for yeah. us then. So remove the guard and we're just going to remove the adapter for the ball pull. Okay. And then we're going to put the activator straight into the uh, into the device itself. What's that going to shorten it? Roughly about 100 mil? Yeah, it's about, about 100 millimetres. Again, you'll see it's... Uh, it's handed on this pole, you'll see it's marked up for which side goes into the uh, into the tool and which side goes into the die. Okay. Yep. Nice little bit of Milwaukee branding on there. Yep, so just spin that. We have got to get this tight, we're just obviously just spinning it in. Yeah, so do that. But then the challenge is obviously you've got to hold the whole uh, uh, tool itself while you put the punch on. But you can see there we've shortened it by about 100 millimetres. So now we're just going to punch from the inside out on this panel. So put the uh, put the die on this side, and then we're going to put the punch on the outside. Ah, right. Okay. We should see this will be the first one you get a really good, and this is uh, in stainless steel, so this yeah. is probably pushing it to its limit. Yeah. This is about one and a half millimeters, but we'll do it with two and a half millimeter stainless steel. But again, just push the trigger and watch this. Wow, it's not going through butter. Yeah. Yeah, that is really good. Again, just remove that. You can see the, uh, how cleanly it's cut that. We know we're going to have a smooth hole. We've seen it before, haven't we? Yeah, but unbelievably smooth. Well, there's one thing that's undoubtable there. It was a smooth hole. We said it how many times? Have you said, that's a smooth hole. That's a smooth hole. It was a smooth hole. It, it's a smooth hole. It was and, a smooth hole. You know, stainless steel. This is 316 grade stainless steel, marine grade stainless. That is notoriously difficult to work with. And yeah, okay, the most difficult bit is drilling the pilot hole. That's the, that's the issue people have got to get over. But obviously it depends on the market you're working in. If you're in stainless steel, yeah, doing a lot of stuff in food factories and stuff like that, yeah. Well, that, well if oh. you're drilling a 20 mil hole to punch out a 100 mil hole in stainless steel, I would argue the, the payoff of drilling that 20 mil hole, and it doesn't matter, as we said, they're a bit raggedy, that you could actually punch out a perfect 100 mil hole, you yeah. know, no deburring, etc. with that. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, so that side, it's, yeah, I, I, I think it's 
you know me, I like a, I like a, a, a tool with a purpose, and I, I think this, yeah, does a great job, if, if that's what you're into. <laughs> yeah, and again, it's not for the occasional cutter of holes. The step cut is a perfectly adequate tool, and people are using them. This one down here, so as I come off my step and back on it again, there we go, okay. Oh. Anyone notice I'm a little taller, so if I go back here, that's my true heart. I'm getting a little bit fed up with being so short. So we've got this one from Mandrax, haven't we, as well. That's the electrician's hole saw kit, which we like with a fine tooth blade, don't we? Yes, we do, and if you watch our next video, you'll see how this Mandrax system compares head to head with what we've got in the Milwaukee. Not head to head, we're not having a race because I know how this works. This bit of kit here does never appear on my side of the race and I'll end up with the traditional method and we know for people who've watched the races before how they all finish. So we'll call that a review. We will and uh, so this is only the second time we've featured Milwaukee on the channel. Uh, we, we, if, we, first, mm. first. No. No, 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 no. The, the, that was the Milwaukee. That oh, was, yes. That, that was not the Milwaukee. Okay, yeah, that we was the Milwaukee so, where it couldn't cut straight. It could, well, I'm getting there with that, actually. We get, actually, <laughs> we cut this Legrand trunking with the Milwaukee. If you haven't seen that review, check that out because that is, uh, I think, is another good tool that, that's so we say growing on me as we, as, we, as we start using it more and more around the workshop. Yeah, I would say it's one of those tools for the flashier electrician. You get out your mill wonky or the, the chop saw, effectively a handheld chop saw. Check out that one. We'll leave it in the link in the description either yeah, ahead. And this one here, probably uh, more your style. I'm probably more the traditional electrician, but we'll find out in the next video. But as always, we'd love your feedback, and you have given us tons already about the force logic from, are we going Milwaukee or Milwaukee? Uh, Milwaukee, yeah, we'll Milwaukee. keep on, on track, yep. Yeah. We'd love that feedback. Please leave all those comments below. <laughs> I'm taller. Hello, my name's Gary and I'm taller. Come on then, Mr. Routledge. It's time. Kelly's heroes.